Welcome to our channel, where we dive deep into the intriguing world of Wagner, a private military organization. In this video, we unveil the resource exploitation strategies that have turned Wagner from mere mercenaries into millionaires. Join us as we explore how Wagner leverages conflict zones to accumulate massive wealth through resource exploitation, security contracts, and resource exploitation. Wagner's Lucrative Ventures in Conflict Zones Wagner, a private military organization, has reportedly found a lucrative source of income through security contracts and resource exploitation in conflict zones, particularly in Africa. This strategic move has allegedly enabled Wagner to accumulate hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. During its peak in late 2022, Wagner engaged over 50,000 mercenaries in Russia's military campaign in Ukraine, with a specific focus on the offensive at Bakhmut in the Donbass region. This private military force possessed a vast array of weaponry, including artillery, armored vehicles, tanks, combat helicopters, and more. On June 27, Russian President Vladimir Putin shed light on the financial support provided to Wagner. Since May 2022, the government has allocated a budget exceeding $1 billion to compensate Wagner's personnel through wages and incentive bonuses. This substantial investment underscores the significant role Wagner plays in Russia's military endeavors. Moreover, President Putin revealed that Concord, a company owned by Wagner's head, Yevgeny Prigozhin, receives an annual payment of 80 billion rubles, equivalent to $940 million, from the state. This payment is intended to supply food to the Russian military. Wagner's involvement in security contracts and resource exploitation has propelled it to the forefront of the private military industry. By capitalizing on conflict zones and leveraging their military capabilities, Wagner has successfully generated substantial financial returns. The organization's operations have raised ethical and legal concerns, prompting ongoing debates about the role and accountability of private military organizations. In conclusion, Wagner's strategic engagement in security contracts and resource exploitation has positioned it as a major player in conflict zones, particularly in Africa. Through its involvement in Russia's military campaigns and its impressive arsenal, Wagner has amassed considerable financial gains. The significant financial support provided by the Russian government further emphasizes Wagner's importance. However, the ethical implications of their operations and the broader role of private military organizations remain subjects of intense scrutiny and discussion. Wagner's Lucrative Resource Exploitation Activities in Conflict Zones In addition to the funds provided by the Russian government, Wagner, an organization established in 2014, has reportedly built a massive money-making machine through its overseas operations. These activities primarily involve resource exploitation, such as oil, gas, minerals, gold, and diamonds, primarily in Africa and the Middle East. The provision of resource exploitation rights has become a common method of compensation for Wagner in exchange for armed support, security, and training. It is estimated that the total assets of Wagner's head, Prigozhin, amount to around $1 billion. Over the past few years, Wagner has significantly expanded its operations in Africa, particularly in countries experiencing conflicts or complex security situations, such as Sudan, the Central African Republic, SAR, and Libya. In 2022, the United States claimed that Wagner was involved in resource exploitation in the CAR, Mali, Sudan, and several other African countries. During a congressional hearing earlier this year, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Political Affairs Victoria Nuland stated that Wagner's gold mining activities in the CAR and Mali directly fund their combat operations in Ukraine. Wagner began controlling a gold mine in the CAR in 2020. During the same year, the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources of the CAR terminated its contract with the Canadian company Indasima and granted a 25-year exploitation right to Midas Resources, a company registered in Madagascar and allegedly linked to Prigozhin. The extensive resource exploitation activities carried out by Wagner in conflict zones have enabled the organization to generate substantial profits. By establishing control over valuable resources such as gold, Wagner has secured a significant financial advantage. However, the involvement of private military organizations in resource extraction and the potential geopolitical implications of such activities remain subjects of concern 
and international scrutiny. In conclusion, Wagner, a private military organization, has leveraged its involvement in conflict zones to engage in resource exploitation activities, primarily in Africa. Through the provision of resource exploitation rights, Wagner has secured significant financial gains, estimated to be worth billions of dollars. The organization's operations in the Car, Mali, and Sudan, particularly in gold mining, have drawn attention and raised questions about the financial support provided to Wagner and its impact on global conflicts. The ethical and geopolitical implications of private military organizations engaging in resource exploitation continue to be areas of discussion and debate. Wagner's Controversial Resource Exploitation Ventures Gold, Timber, and Sanctions In 2020, the U.S. government imposed sanctions on the gold mining company Moroi Invest in Sudan after determining that it was effectively controlled by Prigozhin. In 2021, Moroi Invest reported revenues of $2.6 million. Last year, Sudanese officials conducted an inspection of an aircraft departing from the capital, Khartoum, bound for Russia, and discovered gold concealed in crates labeled as biscuits. The program, All Eyes on Wagner, an open-source investigation initiative led by the French organization Open Facto and hosted in the United States, made a significant discovery in 2022. It found evidence that Wagner had been granted a 30-year timber exploitation right in the Congo Basin, one of the largest pristine tropical rainforest regions in the world. In February 2021, the Central African Republic, ACAR, granted forest management rights near the city of Boda to the company Bois Rouge, based in St. Petersburg and indirectly linked to Prigozhin. During the same period, the CAR government collaborated with Wagner's mercenaries in a campaign to combat rebel forces in the area. As a result, Prigozhin's organization quietly gained control over the entire timber exploitation operations in Boda. Investigators estimate that if approximately 30% of the Congo Basin were exploited, Wagner could potentially generate around $890 million in revenue based on market prices. Even with adjusted figures and higher input costs, the timber export industry continues to yield significant profits for Wagner, concluded the investigators. These revelations shed light on Wagner's involvement in controversial resource exploitation activities. From gold mining in Sudan to timber exploitation in the Congo Basin, the organization's ventures have raised concerns and prompted sanctions. The financial gains associated with these operations have drawn attention to the broader issue of accountability and ethical practices within the private military industry. It remains crucial for governments, international organizations, and civil society to closely monitor and address the activities of private military organizations like Wagner. Stricter regulations and increased transparency are necessary to ensure that resource exploitation is conducted responsibly without fueling conflicts or causing environmental harm. Only through such measures can the ethical and geopolitical implications of private military organizations' involvement in resource exploitation be effectively addressed. In 2018, the U.S. government included the company Evropolis, based in Russia, on its sanctions list, alleging that it served as a front for the notorious Prigozhin. Evropolis won contracts for oil and gas extraction in Syria, but U.S. intelligence believed that the contracts were essentially a way for the government of President Bashar al-Assad to compensate Wagner for their support in retaking several oil fields from the Islamic State, IS terrorist organization in previous years. Accounting records of Evropolis showed that in 2017, the company generated revenues of around $162 million from the Alshare gas plant and three other oil and gas extraction sites in the Homs province. In 2020, the company reported revenues of $134 million, with a post-tax profit of $90 million. Mercury, an oil company in Syria, and also on the European Union sanctions list in 2021, due to suspected ties to Wagner, declared revenues of $67 million during the 2018 to 2020 period. In Libya, 2,000 Wagner members provided security support to General Khalifa Haftar, who controlled a significant portion of the country's eastern region. In July 2020, the National Oil Corporation of Libya announced that Wagner had taken control of operations at Sharara, the country's largest oil field, with a capacity of 300,000 barrels per day. 
The corporation later revealed that Wagner was also involved in other facilities, including the Roslanov refinery, the Zila oil field, the S. Cider port, and the Zuatina port. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, in an interview with RT on June 26, mentioned that Wagner forces might continue their activities in Mali and the Central African Republic, SAR, as military training specialists. Lavrov emphasized that the defense cooperation between African countries and Russia should be distinguished from the contracts these countries have with Wagner. He reiterated that the recent Wagner-related unrest would not affect the strategic relationships between Russia and the countries employing Wagner. The information presented here highlights Wagner's involvement in various activities, including oil and gas extraction in Syria and Libya. It underscores the complex relationships between Wagner, governments, and resource exploitation ventures. These activities raise concerns about transparency, accountability, and the ethical implications of private military organizations' engagement in resource-related operations. Don't miss out on this eye-opening discussion about Wagner's controversial ventures and their impact on global conflicts. Stay informed and join the conversation today.